Hello everyone and welcome back to the Palette Full Packs YouTube channel. I have the Petite Palette Full Packs here for May and we are going to open her on up. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, we got watercolors! <gasps> Guys! We got watercolors. Watercolors are my favorite medium. We have got Van Gogh, 12 pans plus a brush. Oh my gosh, I'm... Okay, I'm too excited. I'm actually gonna open this right now because I've wanted Van Gogh paints for quite a while. <gasps> Look how pretty. I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's like a little embossed Van Gogh on here. That is so cool. Okay, I'm gonna open. <gasps> oh my goodness. Oh, I'm so excited. And we've got some little pans. This must be the brush. What are you? I don't know. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm going to continue to open the rest of the box now. Ooh, we've got a nice fluffy brush. This is 3 8 7 inch, a silver Wee Mop brush. Uh, very fluffy, very soft. And then the last guy we've got in here is a pack of Strathmore watercolor postcards. Oh, they're like legit postcards. Oh my gosh, this is fun. Oh shoot, I may actually send out a bunch of these because oh my gosh these are fun okay cool okay so I have got the list of all our supplies here palette full packs sent out a digital card this time so something really cool about this box is that it was definitely created with the intent of creating postcards to send to people and I think that is such a cool idea especially right now with everything going on we're all at home, so why not make some beautiful pieces of art and then we can actually send them to our friends and family and make someone smile. So I'm absolutely gonna be sending these to people. I just don't know what I'm gonna make, so that's the fun part. And what a fun, awesome idea. I really, really love this. So the first thing we've got here are Van Gogh watercolor pocket box. Basic colors with 12 colors in half pans. I am actually super, super surprised to get a box of Van Gogh paints because these guys aren't exactly cheap. These are really some of the best watercolors that you can get. I've actually never had them for myself, so I'm so excited to try these out and see, ooh, and see how beautiful they are. Ooh, I got the peelies. Are you guys ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Yes! Oh, so satisfying. So I'm actually going to keep this because this is where our color names are. So I'm just gonna stick that. Boom. Right there. So here is our brush. I'm not exactly... Oh, okay. There we go. This little guy. And I assume he just fits right on in there or maybe in this one. Nope, over here. Cool. So we've got a little tiny paintbrush, and this is awesome because he can just, my hands are so shaky, he can just collapse right on in, and then you can take him to go. So it's a perfect little travel set. The brush itself is also nice because we've got a pretty delicate tip on this one, and then we've got a fluffier one over here. Speaking of this guy, this is the Silver Brush Wee Mop 3 8 inch. It is an oval brush with quality camel hair. These kind of brushes are often used to do washes where you need a lot of color, a lot of water on your brush to create a nice smooth wash. If you try to do a wash with this guy, it would take a long time and the result probably wouldn't be that great. So it's good that we've got one of each. So one for the large washes and one for details. And lastly, we have our surface. You guys have heard me rave about Strathmore so much, but still, I love them. These are postcard size, four by six, and they are 140 pounds cold pressed watercolor paper. They have one side for the watercolor paper where your art goes, and then the other side is legit a postcard. So I'm gonna be sending these to my family. Let's see what we can create. Something cute that I saw here is prompt number three. It says, yes, we've done it before, but my cat O'Malley is currently on my desk meowing at me. So cat is one of the prompts. And I think that's just really, really cute. All right, like with any new art supply, I am going to give these a swatch. I'm going to start with Payne's Gray up here. Already pigment is gorgeous. I just kind of brushed this once with the water and look at that payoff already. 
Oh my gosh. <laughs> Next is permanent yellow. Permanent red light. Oh, that is so pretty. This is ultramarine deep. Sap green. Ooh. Yellow ochre. This is Azo Azo? Yellow medium. This is Madder Lake Deep. I've actually never heard of this color before. Oh, okay. It's like a more pinky red. Cerulean Blue. Oh my goodness, look at that color. Wow, that is like a perfect sky blue. This is Viridian. Going down to Viridian City. And last we've got a burnt sienna. All right, so we've got a nice selection of colors here. I just noticed that even the palette is arranged in a nice way. We've got two yellows, two reds, two blues, two greens, and two brown colors, plus the gray and the white. So that is a really good amount to choose from. And we've got our little mixing trays up here as well. These guys, I believe you can pull out. So you can pull out the trays. So if you got like your own half pans and you liked a color that you liked more than these, you can kind of pull them out and put whichever ones you want inside. And then they're really secure in there too. I am going to also try this little brush right here. Nice. So you can get some really delicate lines with this paintbrush too, which is awesome. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tape down my postcard. I'm just going to use some simple washi tape for this. And this is because I plan on using a lot of water in this piece. So taping down my surface is going to prevent some buckling. Doing this also creates a really nice border on the edge of your painting, a crisp white border, and I think that looks really nice. Okay, now I'm actually going to walk you through some steps that I do to make a really cool, fun, easy to do watercolor portrait. I start with a few colors that I want to mix. I'm really feeling these greens and these browns, so I'm going to do a mix of greens and browns and maybe a little bit of pink, but we will see where that takes us. And I'm just going to start by just laying some of the pigment directly on the paper and use lots and lots of water for this. We really want these blooming textures. We want that all over the place. And I'm just going to mix directly on the paper too. I like doing this because with watercolor, you get these really amazing textures so easily and doing techniques like this really uses it to its advantage. Don't be afraid of messing up or anything like that. There really is no messing up here. We kind of want to create a giant mess. Now we are going to let this layer dry completely. If you have to, Walk away for a few minutes, but don't touch this until it's dry. Once that's dry, we are going to repeat the process with the same colors. I like to keep some edges dry because it creates a really cool technique. So the first layer we wet the whole paper and you see where these little white spots are? I like those, so I'm going to create some on purpose this time. Also be sure to drop pigment in a bunch of water too because it creates these really beautiful blooms. Love those. Once 
with watercolor, it's important to keep in the back of your mind wherever water is, is where the paint is going to flow. So if you want to leave an area white, make sure you keep it free of any water. And if you want an area to be colored, saturate it with water. Once you're satisfied with that, again, let the layer dry completely before you go on to the next step. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a face directly on the painting that I've got going on. For this, I'm going to use a really, really light colored pencil, and I'm also going to use a light hand. I don't want a lot of the pencil marks to show through to the final painting, so I'm just sketching a really, really light face. During this part of the process, feel free to let your own personal style show through. I like a bit of a more semi-realistic style, so that's what I went with, but if you like to do something super cartoony or something anime inspired or something super realistic, go ahead. This is just some guidelines to follow if you want to recreate this specific look. Now for painting the face, we are only going to use the colors that we used before. So I'm going to use those two browns and those two greens. I'm going to start by mixing a dark brown color and I'm just going to start outlining some features of the face that I want to put more focus on. So for example, I love painting eyes. So I'm going to make the eyes really dramatic and I'm just going to start flushing them out with the brown colors and if I want a little bit of variety I'll add a tiny bit of green too. During this step I really like to experiment with the different colors and how they mix together so I'll plop down a really dark brown and then maybe I'll add a little bit of green or maybe I'll add some light brown. I kind of just like to use this time to really experiment with the watercolors and play with them. Now if you remember what I said earlier watercolor will follow where the water goes. So if you want an area to look more blended out, if you don't want such harsh lines, what I like to do is I'll start with the color and I'll lay it down on a dry part of the painting. And then if I want to feather it out, I will clean off my brush, make sure it has cleaned water, not too much. So sometimes I like to dry it off just a tiny bit. And then I will just brush that clean brush where the pigment is and I'll kind of spread the water downward and that just means that the pigment is going to follow wherever I brushed the water. So this makes it so you can create those really like feathery kind of blended looks and then you can even do this with other colors if you'd like but if you would like the color to just kind of blend into the background then do it with clean water. Controlling the amount of water on your brush is kind of tricky I will admit and it takes a lot of practice so feel free to experiment with different amounts of water. See how the water reacts with the pigment when you have a lot of water on your brush versus only a little bit of water versus no water. Just the real way to figure out water control with watercolors is really just to do it and see which way works best for you. Now I knew for the hair I really wanted it to look darker. I really wanted that nice contrast. So what I did is I really saturated my palette with those colors. I used a lot of pigment and I just placed those down where I already had colors underneath them. So for example, I put green where there was already green and I put brown where there was already brown and I mixed those together. I also don't really define a lot of lines with the hair. I mostly kind of paint it as a single mass. I don't really worry about strands too much or anything like that. I kind of just make the hair almost part of the background, but darker. In some places, I even feather out the color as to make it look more floaty or more dreamy or just less harsh lines. The only place where I have super, super harsh lines is on the bangs on the forehead and basically anywhere where I want to distinguish the face away from the hair and create contrast there. To create those really fine strands, like on the bangs, I used the detail brush and I just used a super, super light hand but dipped in a lot of pigment. And this brush is great because you can get those tiny, tiny fine details. And this is on a four by six too, so. A plus for that brush. So from here on out, it was a lot of just layering the same techniques over and over. Layering is a great way to use watercolors. It's pretty much the only way I use them. And layering just means applying paint layers one after the other until you have the desired effect. So if I wanted somewhere to have a bit more drama or a bit more 
contrast, I would just go over again with the same techniques that I used in the first layer and I would just repeat them until the painting is to my liking. So I did this a lot on the eyes because I wanted the eyes to be really dark and dramatic. I darkened up the eyebrows, I defined the nose and the mouth a little bit, and I just did the same exact techniques using mostly the same colors too. One of my favorite parts of a painting is finally peeling the washi tape off the edges and revealing the crisp lines underneath. Oh my gosh, I love it. It just looks so, ooh, so fresh, so crisp. And the very last step I did, this was purely just personal preference. I felt like it needed a splash of one more color, so I took that beautiful red and I just applied it on the nose and around the eyes. And this is something I usually do with my watercolors. I like to make little red noses, so I thought I would do that for this painting as well. And I think it just kind of added just a little extra something. For this technique, I used a very, very, very watered down version of the red, and I did the same technique where I lay the color down and then with a clean brush, I spread the water to make it a really delightful wash. And there we have it, the finished piece. I had such a lovely time painting this. These messy portraits are some of my favorite things to do with watercolors, and this has definitely been my most favorite Powerful Packs box to date. I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. I hope you enjoyed making your own little masterful pieces. If you haven't already joined us, please check out the description below to get a palatful packs of your very own. If you are already part of the palatful packs family, please do post your work and share it with us on social media. I would love to see all of your beautiful watercolor paintings and have fun sending these to your friends and family. I'm going to be sending this one to my mom because she's always been a huge supporter of me and I would love to make her smile. That is going to be it for me today, so thank you guys for watching and I will see you all next month with a new box. Bye guys!